welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I'm your host, Stan Rutan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I try to help you spend your wine dollars wisely. And how many of us do want to buy a bottle of wine that's worth it? Did that get... You know, that's the problem with not editing, and it's a good thing about not editing. Editing is you catch me getting stuck, which happens sometimes. We all get stuck trying to say something. What I was trying to say is that we all like to spend our money wisely. We all like to buy a good bottle of wine for the money. Had an interesting discussion on Facebook with Sean Sullivan. He writes for the uh, Wine uh, Enthusiast, and also he has a website called Watching Wine Report. And we were talking about, um, you know, palate preference, how that affects critics. He took exception with something I said, so we had a little debate. It was kind of fun. Everybody's entitled to their opinion, right? I mean, you know, I mean, this this is a hot debate as to whether or not. I mean, he mentioned to me that Eric Asimov, who writes for the New York Times, said that you know. Palette preference has a huge role in um, what critic, how critics view wine. I think it has a role. I think it's hard to get around it. I think that uh, the scores, uh, especially the 100-point scoring system or glasses or decanters or whatever they want to use, somewhat reflects the preference of the person tasting the wine, and you can't get around that. Um, so I've always told people the score is merely a refre reflection of the palette preference of the uh, reviewer. And one of the things that really uh, started this whole debate a long time ago was the fact that Robert Parker, the, the, the term Parker palette came into play because he always seems to give higher scores to big unctuous wines. Now, that being said, and to be fair to Mr. Parker, he also gives big scores to wines that are more feminine, more complex. But he's been on record as saying he doesn't like uh, the wines from the Loire Valley, Cab Francs, that sort of thing. A little too lean for him and so forth and so on. Uh, what Sean said, and I totally agree with him, is we try as critics to divorce ourselves from specific wines that we like and we try to break them down in a basic way. And I don't want to go on too long. I'll, I'll save this for another episode. What does a wine taster look for when he's criticizing wines? We'll go through a little bit of this today because we're going to look at Sauvignon Blanc. And um, the reason I'm doing Sauvignon Blanc is because I am very, I, I was, it was a very sad day for me when Moscato, Moscato, overtook Sauvignon Blanc and made it the fourth largest selling white wine in the United States. I found that hard to believe, although not entirely hard to believe because I realized it. You know, up-and-coming wine drinkers, you know, they go for the sweet stuff, which is great. Nothing wrong with that. I certainly promote, you know, using Moscato, Lambrusco, whatever it is, as a stepping stone into other wines. Just don't stop there. It's just, I love Sauvignon Blanc. I think it's such a great wine. It's so diverse. It's so good with food. Such a great, you know, sit back on the back porch after a hard day work, have a glass of white on a warm, sunny day, or just sitting around by the fire, you know, in the winter time, you want something refreshing. Sauvignon Blanc is so good for that. And you know, fortunately, New Zealand's come along and really has pushed Sauvignon Blanc onto the scene. I know it at my store, and is that I don't know if that's true where you're at, but New Zealand Sauvignon Blancs have really caught on fire and they keep going, which is a good thing. Although sometimes I think there's a little, for me, too much grapefruit in a lot of them. But a lot of people like that. That's great. That's great. We're not going to New Zealand today. We're going to stick with, uh, we got one from the Loire Valley, one from Argentina, and two from Cali. And I'm a bit on record as saying I really have a hard time, other than Happy Canyon and Santa Inez, finding great Sauvignon Blanc from California. So what are we looking for in a Sauvignon Blanc? What is it that a critic looks for? Well, we look for balance. You know, it can't have so much acid that you, you pucker up and, you know, you, you can't even barely drink it, it hurts you back here, <clears throat> but it does have to have some acidity to help it pop. It has to have fruit or, uh, in a lot of cases, good minerality. Um, it has to have a good uh, mid uh, front, mid and finish. Uh, can't be thin, can't be flabby, and flabby is caused from no acid. So those are kind of just basic things that you're looking for as a critic or breaking down Sauvignon Blanc before you grade it, before I grade it, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for uh, balance, um, some complexity, you don't expect a huge amount of complexity out of a Sauvignon Blanc, maybe some, especially when you get into France, you get some more of that minerality, grass notes, whatever they are. Um, you are going to get complexity, don't get me wrong, there is complexity in Sauvignon Blanc. 
absolutely. Just sometimes harder to define. But I'm looking for balance, I'm looking for good acid, good balance of the minerality, fruit, and acid, all of those things. And uh, that's what, yeah, that's basically what I'm looking for. So we're going to start with a Loire Valley Sauvignon Blanc, Corte Pace Sauvignon Blanc. It uh, rolls in at $9. And of course, the Loire Valley is famous for Sancerre, which is a, usually a more expensive Sauvignon Blanc. A lot of people like Sancerre. I'm actually kind of happy. I've been selling a lot of it this summer. I mean, I can hardly keep it on the shelf. A couple of years ago, I had like four or five, and a lot of them just sat there. But now they are moving, which I'm very excited about. You know, they tend to be uh, kind of budget busters. They run in be anywhere from $20 to $40. Um, you know, not something you just want to quaff down. You certainly have to think about it. But Sancerre is a great uh, area for Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, Touraine is also an area in, in uh, the Loire Valley for Sauvignon Blanc. Really good. And of course, we, you know, have other areas too uh, where Sauvignon Blanc really uh, flourishes. But the Loire Valley is one of those areas. So let's see what we get on the nose. So this one has grapefruit on the nose. A lot of grapefruit pith. A little bit of, uh, just a tiny bit of cut grass. It's kind of got an interesting, um, almost like a perfumed grapefruit. Uh, it's the best way I can describe it. A little bit of almond, I guess. that's what, Maybe that's what it is. It's kind of like crushed up almonds on the grapefruit pith. That's what I'm getting. And, you know, I, I mean, as you would expect from France you get a little bit of wet stone going on. By the way, I don't know if I mentioned this, this uh, new uh, tablecloth I have brings back fond memories of my wine shop when I opened my wine shop, Brazenly Lucid Wines, a few years ago. And uh, we had to, you know, we're on a budget, tight budget. We had to look for uh, uh, something for tablecloth. So we went to a fabric store and got these this cool tablecloth with wine bottles on it. It's been through a lot. There's a lot of wine stains on it. I mean, this thing has been through many 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 wine tasting so I thought I'd bring it back I like it a lot it's pretty cool hopefully it's not too distracting a little bit of Myers lemon let's see what we get on the palate right off it's a little bit light on the palate so I talked about that intensity complexity but, that being said, a lot of crushed rock, I get a lot of lime, kiwi action going on, a little bit, just a skosh of grapefruit pith, which I, and I'm, I like that because sometimes Sauvignon Blanc can be over the top grapefruit. I think you could actually put some of these uh, New Zealand Sauv Blancs in a blind lineup, put a little bit of uh, uh, white food coloring in there, some sort of milkiness, put them next to uh, grapefruit juice. I don't know if you could tell the difference in some cases. So this has good minerality, a little bit of crushed rock action, a little bit of steeliness. I like the steely action, like you licked on the side of a steel tank. What I find interesting is this has just a, just a pinch, just a pinch of white pepper on the back side. I love the kiwi, a little bit of quince action going on. It's a little bit mouth puckering, but not bad. I really like it. I could see this with oysters all day, you know, clams, mussels, all of those things. This would be great um, with halibut in, in a certain area. This would be a great cooking Sauvignon Blanc. You know, pour a little bit while you're cooking up your shrimp. Drink some, pour some, drink some, drink some, drink some. Great bottle of wine for that. Nine bucks is a great value. So breaking this down as a critic has a lot of qualities I like. I think the um, the quince kiwi sort of thing is a little powerful on the back end. It's a little thin up front. So it has good flow across the palate. It has good complexity in the sense of, you know, you get the um, minerality, you get the quince, you get the kiwi, you get the lime, you get all those things. The only long finish like I said, the only weakness in this Sauvignon Blanc would be 
the thinness on the mid palette and the front. So that's it. Nine bucks though, I think it's a great value. I think it's a good bottle of wine. I think a lot of you are going to like it. It's a nice crossover from uh, you know, some of the flabbier Sauvignon Blancs. You get into the more intense Sauvignon Blancs. It doesn't have too much acid. It's a little soft on the acid side. A little bitter action because of those types of fruits that it has in there. Get you on the backside. But for nine bucks, for what it delivers, for what it is, I'm going to have to go B minus, B, B minus on that. I think it's a great value for $9. It's a good Sauvignon Blanc. Let's move on. Now we're going to Mendoza, Argentina. And I've noticed a lot of good Sauvignon Blanc coming out of this region. And I'm just curious how many of you actually look to Argentina for Sauvignon Blanc. It, it, it's not the first place to go. When you think Argentina, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Malbec. Absolutely. You don't think Sauvignon Blanc, but I've, like I said, I've had a lot of good ones come out of this region. This is the Zorzal Terroir Inico Sauvignon Blanc 2013 from... Tupangado, Mendoza, Argentina. This got a silver medal in the Decanter World Wine Awards in 2014. $14. No. Yes, $14. So I'm excited to try this. I've never even heard of this producer. I've never heard of this wine. I do like Sauvignon Blanc from Argentina. Let's see what we get on the nose. A little stinky, like somebody just took a match, blew it out. You know, sometimes you have a book of matches in the bathroom. We all know why. <laughs> but yeah, a, lot of, a little bit of stink action going on in the nose, which is interesting. We always say interesting because, you know, we always get those basic things when it comes to wines. Um, I'm reading the book now. Oh, oh, there it is. I'm reading this book now, True Taste by Matt Kramer. Um... And very curious, he has seven essential wine words. I've got partway through it. it. Gives me some good fodder for my blog. I guess I brought that up because um, he takes it up to the fact that many people get flowery about their descriptions. You know, like, uh, descriptions, they try to get all over the place and make new things up or whatever it is. You know, I try to keep to the basics. This is a stinky wine. It might have some other things. I will let you know. But I try not to veer off. I'm not trying to make this... Uh, make a Sauvignon Blanc not a Sauvignon Blanc by using uh, words that a lot of you can't relate to. Um, I forget the one I heard the other day. I thought it was so funny. A specific kind of fig was mentioned. It's like, you know, a fig is a fig. Maybe they, maybe there are certain figs that smell a little bit different, but the bottom line is you want the, you know, I mean, fig is easy to identify. When you start throwing in specific kinds of fig, I remember I uh, read one time in the Wine Spectator, I thought it was the funniest thing I ever read. Uh, they were doing a description and said it, Kenya double A bean, whole bean coffee, or some, some ridiculous thing like that. It's like, really? What does that mean? I mean, how many of us have, you know, that kind of sensory memory to know that, you know, let's just say coffee, or coffee bean, or ground coffee, whatever it is. Sometimes we can get carried away. I'm really having a hard time getting past the stink on this one. Get a little, uh, definitely like a carnation element coming through on the backside, which is interesting. By the way, um... Just a little shout out to Decanting a little bit. I opened up these not that long ago. So they haven't had a lot of time to breathe. A lot of you guys don't think about making your whites breathe. But sometimes that stink that you're getting, that kind of burnt match smell, will blow off after a while. Get a lot of white flowers and get some honeydew melon. Orange blossom, which is interesting. Let's see what we get on the palette.
this Sauvignon Blanc has a lot more going on. It's 14 bucks. I get that white pepper hit on the back end, which I find very interesting. I like that. A lot of um, grass, uh, lemongrass, uh, you know, I get that white pepper just kind of dominates. But kiwi, quince, all that coming through. A little bit of lime. This reminds me a little bit, without the sweetness, like if you took the sugar out of one of those uh, sticks of gum, remember the juicy fruit with all those stripes on it? If you just took the sugar out and just had those flavors all together without the sugar, that's what I get out of this wine. It is very, like a little, you know, citrus medley on the palate. With a little cut grass, not a lot of crushed rock, not a lot of minerality, but some, and then white pepper right at the end. Just a little hit of white pepper. Very interesting wine. What I like about this wine, too, is on the mid palate, it, it, it's not creamy, but it has a fullness on the mid palate that kind of fills it out. You know, just really makes it um, bigger on your palate. A lot of citrus notes, a lot of quince, a lot of a um, little bit of pith, like lemon, lime, and grapefruit pith, which is the you know, the pulp part of the skin, so it's not, and then like, almost like you squeezed all the juice out of the, 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 the citrus and then you're kind of chewing on the skin part of it, that's what it reminds me of, and that's not off pudding, I like that, um, good acidity, good balance, good weight on the mid palate, I'm liking this wine, if I'm going B, in this $14, if I'm going B minus on the Loire Valley Sauvignon Blanc, I have to go B plus, A minus on this. I think it's a great job. I think it's a great Sauvignon Blanc. Very interesting. Um, a lot of things going on. The, 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 it lingers quite a bit. You know, it's a great bottle of wine. I like it. From Argentina. Look to Argentina for Sauvignon Blanc. Now, let's move on to Sonoma County, uh, Alexander Valley. Great place for uh, wines. I love Alexander Valley. Um, in fact, Alexander Valley Vineyards. Is it out? No, no. Uh, Dry Creek Vineyards does a really good, or at least in past memory, does a good Sauvignon Blanc. So we're doing two from Quivera at different price points. This is a Quivera Vineyards and Winery 2013 Sauvignon Blanc, Dry Creek Valley, Sonoma County. This rolls in at $15, and on Wine Searcher, it said it got 86 points. And I think Wine Searcher, I believe, just. Uh, you know, averages out points from different sources. So 86 points. I'm not a points guy, but uh, there you go. Let's see what we get on the nose. Entirely, entirely different bouquet on this wine. Almost boring compared to the other two. Probably should have done those two first. You know, if you haven't tried these wines, you really don't know. This has like um, just barely sense of grapefruit. I get the grapefruit juice. Just a hint of maybe wet stone. You know, like that smell of wet. You know, after the rain or. You know, the, the river goes over the wet stone and kind of splashes off. You smell that wet rock. A little bit of uh, white flowers coming through. Yeah, like I said, really not, and nothing's really like jumping out at me, giving me a zesty like, wow, which I like, that's one of the things I like about Good Sauvignon Blanc. Way more impressive, way more impressive on the palate than on the nose. And I like that in a wine. Sometimes, you know, you smell the wine, you're like, eh. like the Argentinian one was a little stinky, but when you tasted it, that all went away. This is a little bit more fruit forward than either one of those in the sense of riper fruit. Um, those other ones had more of that kind of bright, zesty citrus. This has a rounder, I get a little, um, Apple coming through, mixed with a little bit of grapefruit juice, like you're, you know, you 
bit into an apple and just sprinkle a little bit of grapefruit juice on there. Not a lot. The apple kind of absorbs that. A little bit of honeydew melon coming through. And right at the core, there's a little bit of a lime zest in the middle. You know, the acid isn't bad. It's not great, but it's pretty good. I'm really kind of impressed. I think I said this was $15. Not bad for a Cali Sauvignon Blanc. The, the palate is still lingering a little bit. I get that little bit of a lemon-lime thing going on on the finish. You know, it's not super complex. I mean, it's not, you know, there's not a lot of things going on. I think it's a little bit boring on the palate, just slightly, but it's good Sauvignon Blanc. I think a lot of you out there will like this Sauvignon Blanc. I even get a little white pepper on the finish. I don't know if it's something I ate. I doubt it. I don't think Raisin Bran for breakfast would give me white pepper. Anyway, I, I'm getting a little bit of that, but not a lot. I think this is a little more boring than those other two. Um, but it has more going. I might have scored the first one a little high. I might go B minus C plus on that first one just because it was a little simpler. Because now I'm getting into these other ones, I'm thinking, eh, you know, eh, B minus C plus on the first one. I'm going down a little bit only because I'm tasting these and I'm realizing, hey, you know, this one um, will be liked by a lot of people. A bit of that grapefruit pith. I love that word pith. Um, I wouldn't say it's a friend, a, an acquaintance, Joe Robert, one wine dude. I use this grapefruit pith a lot. I and I just kind of picked up on that a little bit. It's a great descriptor, kind of that pulpy side of the grapefruit, so you don't get the juice side, you don't get the, the skin side, you get the you know the, the flavors, but they're not prominent. I like that wine. I'm gonna go B on that. I think that's a good representation of Sauvignon Blanc from Alexander Valley. Very impressed. So now we're going to move on to their next tier. I hope this video isn't going too long. I appreciate you guys watching. I really do. I like it when you stick around and you, you know, for you guys that really are loyal to this program, I thank you very much. I'm, like I said, I keep trying to build viewership. It's not easy, you know. I mean, you've got to work at it. You've got to keep putting them out there and you've got to keep advertising these videos. So this is the Quivera 2012 Sauvignon Blanc Fig Tree Vineyard. So it's a vineyard specific made with organically grown grapes. Okay, just making sure the other one didn't say that. Uh, so this is uh, rolls in at $23. Uh, wine searcher said average 88 points. I'm just bringing this out so you guys can see what some people have said about it. I don't know if that's something you... Is that something you want to hear? I don't know. Like I said, I'm not a points guy, but I am curious what other people think of wines. It kind of gives me a, a base to go off of. This has got a silver medal in the San Francisco Chronicles wine competition in 2014. Quivera, Fig Tree Vineyard, organically grown grapes. Let's see what we get on the nose. So, like its sibling, it's a little bit uh, boring. I get the, um, again, melon, white flowers, a little bit of grapefruit pith, a little bit of grass. I get, now, I, I got a little bit of dirt, just right off the, just barely, a little bit of dirt, like uh, dry dirt coming through. Just right in the back end, it just like kind of hits you. Let's see what we get on the palate. Once again, Quivera delivers. Um, it's interesting that, and it's not an off-putting thing, and I, I don't know how else to describe it, but that kind of 
dry, dusty dirt thing comes in the background, but it's not prominent because it's booted out by the citrus notes, and big time citrus notes on this one. I get a little bit of grapefruit, a little bit of lime, a little bit of lemon, kind of all blended together. I get that. There's white pepper on this one for sure. It's very spicy on the palate, which I find quite intriguing uh, for a Sauvignon Blanc. Excellent acidity. Good balance. I mean, you got all those citrus notes, a little bit of quince, a little bit of kiwi, a little bit of star fruit, uh, lemon, lime, grapefruit, all kind of together. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just thinking about it with that little white pepper background, good acid, good flow, good um, a balance in this wine. I'm really impressed from Dry Creek Cali. Both of these are drinking pretty good. I'm going to have to go A, A minus. Not quite full on A. A minus on the Quivera Fig Tree Vineyards at 23 bucks. Kind of spendy, but that being said, People go out and blow that much money on a cloudy bay Sauvignon Blanc, Dog Point Sauvignon Blanc, all good Sauvignon Blancs from New Zealand, and not even think about it, or they'll spend way more than that for a Santa Margarita Pinot Grigio, which I totally don't get. So, 23 bucks for this Quivera Fig Tree Vineyard is a good buy, and this is a good Sauvignon Blanc, good balance, A, A minus. There you go. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And spread the word. Please spread the word. Tell people about this video. Tell them, hey, you know, you can learn something from Stan the Wine Man. You know, learn something about Sauvignon Blanc. Learn something about whatever we're doing. I have an episode. Um, I did an episode on Schiava, La Grine. You saw that. Hopefully you learned something about that. Those, those are wines that a lot of us haven't tried. But always remember, wine is not a mystery. It is just fermented grape juice. Drink it. Enjoy it. Be willing to expand your palate horizons. Try new things, but never, ever, ever let anyone tell you what you should or shouldn't like. If you do that together, we can take the snob.